My good people, it's profile time. And oh my goodness, we got a guy who's still going strong at the age of 35 playing for Milan. It's Clarence Clyde Seedorf. I would make love to that man. <laughs> He's brilliant. His, his footwork could make love to you. <laughs> so classy. I wouldn't even know. No. <laughs> He's in the Dean Winner's Law family, you're not, so you'll have to get yourself in there to get access to him. Oh, no. There's motivation. There yeah. is a way, Pete. Yeah. Well, I have access to the uh, upload system. Oh, that's Sorry. true, yeah. <laughs> in effect, you've got the keys. God, I feel like War Games. <laughs> 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 a war games in which you go in there infiltrate at Clarence off in the bomb <laughs> <laughs> using the internet which they didn't in war games no, which makes it all the more incredible yeah. he's got an advantage which uh, makes it science fiction uh, yeah. uh, he was born on 1st of April 1976 nine years after the summer of love after yeah summer of love it's, not, it's a rare beast a current footballer being in there we've obviously got gigs in there and one or two others he's worthy yeah fair Raquel enough may as well, well I'll find that we had Maldini <laughs> didn't we didn't Maldini just as he was retired yeah, there's a few in there but you know back. I know what you're saying brother I know what you're saying. Uh, yeah, still going strong. Um, 35 years old, playing for Milan. One of the most decorated players in the modern game. And a man never afraid to give an opinion. No. No. As most Dutch footballers uh, are like. <laughs> but uh, him in particular. But we will be talking about that. His um, list of managers that he's played under is incredible. Fabio Capello, Sven Goran Eriksson, Carlo Antonotti, Gus Hiddink, Marcello Lippi, and Louis van Hull. <laughs> That's a great line. Uh, you have to be a decent player if you've been coached <laughs> yeah. by yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is a huge trophy cabinet. <laughs> if you're not a decent player at the start of that, you will be by the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just a shell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <yeah. laughs> Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, at the age of 14 he was progressing nicely through the ranks at Ajax and a player he looked up to was Frank Reichard who would later become a teammate of his and Seedorf um, as a young lad looked at Reichard a lot of inspiration there and he always wanted to win three Champions Leagues because uh, Reichard himself had won two oh, what he actually set out to sort of <laughs> yeah. to, to well, do he's that won, specific he's won four yeah he's brilliant, brilliant yeah. and of course um, Seedorf was the first player to have won three Champions Leagues with three different clubs yeah yeah um, so with some with Ajax in 95 Real Madrid in 98 and Milan in 2003 mm. and then and 2007 yeah. sounds about right to me uh, when he was 15 his parents uh, turned down an offer for him from Real Madrid but his chance at Ajax was to come just a year later when he was 16 years old 211 days and uh, that he became Ajax's youngest ever player oh really mm. it, it's crazy to think he left stand still do you know uh, I'm not too sure um, because they've produced some big young players you know, yeah, really but to be the you know to have hold, held that record at any point in uh, well, at the start of your career I'd imagine it would be you know. <laughs> but it's crazy to think that he left Ajax when he was 19 yeah I mean because he was in that wonderful side who won the Champions League teammates included Van der Sar Reisiger uh, Rijkaard uh, the De Boer brothers Davids Lippmann and Overmars Carnu and Cliver were on the that bench that is outrageous yeah. isn't it just, they, I mean, they may yeah. never have a team that good again which, and that's tragic but they, yeah, they, they, they definitely won't unbelievable well, it's the same it? when he was in the Dutch side to be fair they yeah. probably had the best Dutch team we'll ever see I think in our lifetime mm. do you think yeah, yeah oh, they well, were, the, the team the team well, that got the to the World Cup final were a bit more sort of workman like weren't yeah, they yeah. well I mean yeah I know what you're saying I know what you're saying um, so yeah they won the Champions League of course which was uh, the highlight of his uh, Ajax career winning, uh, he won a, a number of trophies there but that was the pick of him and then after that uh, incredible win he moved abroad he went to Sampdoria which um, some thought was a slightly funny move but he went to play under Sven Goran Eriksson and uh, he said that Sven a large part of the reason he's in this profile <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh you've done it again. yeah um, so anyway Sven uh, started <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome in <laughs> yeah. Chapter 2 The Sven years <laughs> He was only under Sven For a year um, He did say that oh, What a year What a year That's he how long the podcast Is going to be <laughs> <laughs> He did say that um, Sven had a huge impact On his career And was like a father to him That, that were his words And he said that um, I never struggled With my finances again <laughs> <laughs> A philandering father <laughs> <laughs> There it is um, He said He told me about life He helped me to understand What was needed to survive Outside of Holland It went beyond football It was the culture the mentality of players uh, in, in Italy survive <laughs> but, it, but that's crucial though yeah. how many players it's, it's not fantasy football you don't just plonk one player and stick him in that country and let him get on with it you know there's so much more especially it's so often forgotten exactly especially to a lad who's still a teenager mm. for we've like often that. said in this show that there's not enough money or attention put into helping players settle in different countries yeah it's just, why 
would you make such an investment and millions and millions yeah. of pounds yeah. and not make sure they're settled yeah. properly? It's crazy. You're aff- 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 you know, effectively just throwing them onto the pitch and that's it. That's Get the only time yeah. you give them Do your job. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then for like the whole week, apart from that 90 minutes, you know, yeah. just yeah. To fend for yourself. Yeah. You're your own problem now, and you, pal. <laughs> and you're massively exposed to really obvious parts of a different culture mm. as well. Yeah. Um, and often there's not a very nice one, you know. But uh, Seedorf did say that Sven uh, taught him to combine kind of a hard work uh, playing style with tactical and, and technical play. And he said that really helped him throughout his, um, his career. And um, he said, you know, he came from Holland where people express their opinions quite freely. And that's how they, they do things in Holland. Whereas in Italy, he said, you're just told to shut up and get on with it and just try harder kind of thing. Um, so after a year at Sampdoria, he went to play uh, for Madrid under Fabio Capello, who was only there for a year. As we said at the start, there's only 24 <laughs> managers in 25 years. Or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was around this, and time that includes him twice. Yeah, <laughs> Capello. Yeah. Each yeah. time for just a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Uh, around this time, he played at Euro '96 with Holland, and unfortunately, it was his penalty miss against France um, that lost them the shootout in the quarterfinals. Had a, he, I mean, he got 87 caps for Holland, uh, and he played uh, 87 Dutch caps. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Did he retire after Euro 2008? Well, he kind of he fell out with Van Basten. Yeah, he retired he? a couple of times, didn't he? I yeah, think he had a, indeed. He had but a he's, he's sad, right? He could so still be playing <laughs> so, unlike, so unlike a Dutch player Isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah absolutely it, That's almost like A testimonial isn't it Just like leaving You know Leaving a training camp In a hissy fit I imagine they'll just Get applauded out When that happens <laughs> It's like yeah It's been a great career Well done yeah, yeah. A fitting end <laughs> Yeah um, In his first season with, season with Madrid They won the league And he loved playing um, Under Fabio Capello He said that Capello would use the guys With strong personalities To get the dressing room going and he motivated the team by creating almost conflicts in the dressing room the way he talks about it he would get people riled and then send the team out to play and he said often when that happened they'd go out and and, and kick butt as he, as he put it kick know. butt you know. in 98 when uh, Real Madrid won the Champions League yeah. um, in the league that season Clarence Sadov scored an absolute howitzer from about 45 yards out that was against Atletico Madrid was it yeah, yeah. No, it was and then Manaman comes over and celebrates with him he, he, take, he, he shoots from so far out yeah, it's the insane. keeper automatically assumes it must be a pass runs across to cover the rest of his goal it goes in the other corner <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah the, the keeper if he had a decent position would have caught that I don't think the keeper knew it was even a shot until it yeah. was right on him but it, he, he drilled I mean what a shot yeah, so it, and it was it was no exaggeration it was 45 yards out and it was yeah. a powerful drive yeah. it wasn't looping around no. it. it's, it's still rising yeah. still rising yeah, yeah. When, uh, when he did his punditry with the BBC at the World Cup which I'm, I'm sure we'll come on to he, um, he did a little segment where he was just sort of explaining how to how to just belt one into the top corner yeah. obviously you know, there's editing there but yeah, you can, can see the man knows what he's doing yeah. when it comes to <laughs> yeah. that it's incredible <laughs> It's yeah. like a golf chip almost The way he hits yeah. that ball oh, it's, it's obscene um, Again talking about Capello's uh, management style He said that once they were losing 1-0 to Atletico Madrid It wasn't that game And they were playing with 10 men And he said they, We came in the dressing room and, and we began talking about the game And Capello I think Capello came in And wanted a bit of quiet But they carried on their discussion And Capello just started going mental So Seedorf just started shouting back at him And there was uh, It was alleged that Capello Threw his jacket on the ground And it all sort of went off But then Capello <laughs> used that and he sent them out there you know he said give him a slap on the back and go right go on then and they and they won the game 4-1 and Seedorf scored and, and then they said, had a fight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well not quite the opposite he said that um, on the way out he was about to drive off and Capello pulled his car up against his well down the window and sort of shook hands and gave him the nod to say, yeah. there you go and he yeah. said that's Capello all over yeah mm. I know I know I've heard I read a story James Horncastle was telling me about how once um uh, Capello challenged Sadoff because Sadoff is known as being quite chippy, as you've said. Yeah. And um, I don't, I can't remember. I mean, it might have been at Madrid. I can't remember. But he he, um, he actually challenged Sadoff at one point. That Sadoff was chipping off in the changing room, and Capello went right. You get up here then if you think you can. Like, yeah. Get up here. You know. I'm not sure if he did or not. Oh no, that, that, that's it. That's it. He said, you, if you if you think you're the coach, then get up here. I think yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's right. Uh, second season, um, as we touched upon, you know, he won the Champions League. That was under Jupp Hanks and uh, the uh, the goal in the Madrid derby. He stayed one more year. Hank has left Madrid that season Even though he won the Champions League Yeah Because he didn't win the league Mm. Yeah, that, well, yeah, no, he was sacked. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think was he not? I think he was. Well, he sacked. definitely left. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I think Del Bosque was sacked when he won the league, but not the Champions League as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Just <laughs> get it right. Just be ridiculous. You Do both. Yeah. Can, why can't you understand? Every this? single year, <laughs> I've, t- I've two managers. 
<laughs> yeah. One for the, yeah. That's a good shout. Um, yeah, so he stayed one more year at Madrid and then was sold to Inter. And he was there. He was at Inter for for three seasons, which is funny because I forget he was kind of at Inter post Ajax. I think of him as a Madrid and a Milan man. He's got one of the yeah. another one of the greatest goals I've ever seen at Juve uh, for uh, Inter. Yeah, so was that the two all draws? Like a left foot volley. Yeah, into the far corner. Yeah. Delish. Um, he didn't win anything at Inter, but he did it his next and current. It's yet another player to have played for both Milan clubs. Yeah. It's, hmm. Quite what, a prestigious group as well. What about the goal? Was it Cedar who scored in the three-two Milan derby? Into a two-nil up, were yeah, they? Yeah, was, yeah. at half time. And him and, and, and him and Kakar linked up. Kakar scored the second. Yeah, and Sadov absolutely smashed one again. He scores. He goals. was on the turn. Yeah, he scores goals from everywhere. But I mean, it, it, all through his career, he's just been so driven. Always wanting to play. Always, you know. Yeah. You imagine the first man on, on the training pitch and the last one, etc., etc. Yep. Et mm. Old adage. But like, I remember reading like an Observer piece, like just to be. It was when they played Man U in the. I think it was. It wasn't a group match. I think it might oh, semi final, was it? Yeah. Yep. And he was. The 1 3 he, 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 he had a ruined um, hip. And he was committed to play. <laughs> and bearing in mind, by this time, he'd won all those many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might take the shine off wanting to do it one more time, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, he was yeah. so committed to playing. He's won 20 major trophies. Yeah, that's what you got to say. Yeah. I think, do you know what? I that's one the major trophy. Uh, over one major trophy a season. He's not the first European player to have won the World Club Cup with three different sides. I As think. well? Yeah, with Ajax, Madrid, and. Did Ajax win it? I th- may, I, might well have been. Might well have been. I think Ajax, Madrid, and Milan. I think that's right. Wow. I think that's right. Um, sadly, he, he received um, a little bit of racist abuse while playing in Italy, but he remembers an occasion against Catania when uh, one of the uh, Catania players, of course, uh, said something. Uh, which was obviously shocking and after the game the player in question's wife and kids came up to Seydorf without knowing this asking for autographs and uh, and photos with him and the Catania player came over and, and just looked really embarrassed and was just like oh bloody hell you know and Seydorf kind of offered his hand and the guy shook and there was a, an apology and stuff. being the bigger man yeah, yeah that's yeah. great yeah, yeah. yeah indeed but imagine what a, what imagine a brilliant way to humble him yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> his own wife and <laughs> yeah, your presumably, child presumably he took the wife with him yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, 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 you're He's not Tony Yaboa. <laughs> <laughs> you're his wife. Put, put a few kisses on there. <laughs> <laughs> Phone number at the bottom. <laughs> um, Why have you written a racist term? <laughs> Ask him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, the um, uh, former psychologist uh, at Milan, Bruno uh, Di Michaelis, who I think is at Chelsea, or he certainly was, said that uh, Seedorf is um, the strongest personality he's ever come across. He was Latin? Well, I'm not sure if he was Bentner. at Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's been at clubs with, with, with Bentner, but... Um, it's his loss. He, well, he, he said that... Uh, he, he said, for example, if the manager tells the players to defecate on the pitch, the players would do so without question, but Seedorf would say, certainly, mister, but what colour should our shit be? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's such a strange... Yeah. <laughs> An odd orange analogy. Yeah, but he's obviously we've talked about Seedorf being outspoken and, and not afraid to give an opinion, which was possibly why he was a decent pundit. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah. well, the thing with it is, it, it's he's very English charming. Else. With it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. So when we say he's outspoken, it's not like he's this ranty, no, that's gob right. shy. He's very, yeah. very charming, yeah. and erudite. And, yeah. and let's not forget, he, he, his work in his it's Suriname, he's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his family are from and stuff. He, well, it's where he, he was work, born, he does, born there, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the work that he does there with, um, he's got like his own stadium and the stuff. The Clarence Seedorf Stadium. That's right. Um, he, as, as a pundit he was as good as David's was bad yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I can say yeah, he, and he was right. great and I hope we yeah. see him again and he didn't leave his phone on like Emmanuel Adebayor's no. no. well, <laughs> oh well we'll end um, with a quote from the great man himself he said I think I'm outspoken but I think people respect me for that who does not talk cannot be judged who does not shoot the penalty cannot miss <laughs> in he comes Clarence Seedorf <laughs> For the Demon Dash Hall of Fame. Let's see Dolphin.